Pete Agnew of Nazareth talks about that sad day that their longtime drummer, Daryl Sweet, died. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. I'm a big fan of the band Nazareth. I caught on on their third album from 1973, Razamanaz, and that was sort of a next step for the band. It was produced by Deep Purple's Roger Glover, and it was a pretty big success. Glover also produced Loud and Proud and co-produced Rampant, along with guitarist Manny Charlton of Nazareth. He would go on to produce their next six studio albums. The classic lineup also consisted of singer Danny McCafferty and drummer Daryl Sweet, who died in 1999. McCafferty is also retired. The day Daryl Sweet died was a shocking one for fans. You know, when I was, uh, years, I think in 2004, I was talking to the guys in April Wine, I know which you guys know, and yeah. and I was talking to Jerry Mercer, their drummer, and uh, uh, Brian Greenway, and the, they were both yeah. very emotional when they were talking about Daryl. They went, I can't believe it, it was just like, and, and you know what they said, Pete? They said, uh, it's a truism and it's a cliche, but they say, your life can change on a dime, and that made me remember that. That's what both of them said. Oh, very much so. And I mean, we, we, the thing we, we toured, they did get, well, Dal got on great with them, but we all did, April when they still do. Uh, I was, uh, in fact, I saw Brian and them out and we did the, that, that uh, rock cruise and they were on that. So I saw him and Miles and we had a great time uh, out in that. And I saw Jerry not that long ago either. He's, uh, he moved to Kingston now. He's out in Kingston, Ontario. So I know where they all are. <clears throat> so they, they were very, they were, we were all good friends. So they, it came as a, it was a huge shock to them, and it is true. I mean, we, you go out, you go out to play. We went out to start a tour, you know, the, the night before. Daryl and I went to a Japanese, one of these itchy band type places, you know. We went there, and everything was fine. And in the morning, everything was fine. And then by, you know, by four o'clock in the afternoon, he was gone. It was very, very, very short, big, big shock, and it's hard. It just at the time, it was devastating. You know? No, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't mean to sound morbid, but it, it, it is. And tales can be told, and sometimes they're not right. Is it true he, he he walked off the bus and fell down? Is that true? No, no. Well, we, we, we no, no. We were actually on the bus. He, 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 we were part of the. Uh, it was an outdoor gig we were going to be playing. Uh, it was like a kind of festival kind of thing. It was in a. Uh, it was a, it was a, a kind of sports park and mm-hmm. um, we parked the bus at the back because the Indianapolis the, the, I'll tell you what it was the Kentucky the Kentucky Derby was on so we couldn't get hotels anywhere and we, we, we came up from Indianapolis we played the night before where, where we'd arrived we didn't play there we stayed there and we drove up to Kentucky and, and uh, we couldn't get hotels there so we were just going to play the gig and then head away in our bus overnight to someplace else so we were all hanging out in the bus where the crew were setting up and he was hanging out, and I was up the back lounge, and he was at the front, and he and Dan was up the front, and he he, he got he started to get a funny kind of you know started taking a funny kind of turn, so then he started you know sort of going funny, so uh, Dan got they jumped off, and they got the medics that were all there, they happened to be there for the gig, you know, so it was good they had the ambulance and everything there, and so they walked him off the bus, and then when he just got down to the bottom of the steps, he collapsed, you know, right. that was it. But when we had, you know. You would always worry if you'd have been if this had happened and nobody had been there. You'd always thought for the rest of your life, could we have done something? But when it happened to him, there was two guys there. Was a there was there was a the guys there with all the uniforms, the oxygen tanks, the defibrillators. There, wow. everything was right there when it happened. So you know they couldn't have done any more. You know, they, in fact, they kept him alive. It's kind of nice that it's a family affair with Lee taking over for uh, Daryl. Uh, I was oh. shocked when I was shocked when I heard about Daryl. I almost fell over. Uh, quite a few years ago, I know, but I must be nice to have your your son there. Well, it's twenty years now, you yeah. know, that, that, that Lee's been playing with. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lee, I mean, as I say, I'm, 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 all my sons are, are musicians. They're all they all playing, uh, uh, you know, different bands. I mean, Chris, in fact, he was over in Canada with the Rizzo's just quite recently playing bass. Um, like I used to, I, when the other boys were were very young and they used to all play you know together in my studio at home and when I would come back from Canada or wherever I was wherever I was recording or wherever I was doing I used to come back I used to jam with them you know so I I mean I I used to jam with Lee when he was 11 you know when he was playing drums at that age so we're playing with each other a long long time now you know and it's uh, wow We'd, when we're playing when we're on the stage and when we're touring, it's, it's, not, it's not father and son, it's the rhythm section. It's the bass player and the drummer. Nazareth have just released their 24th studio album. 
We'll have a link to their website where you can pick up the album in the description of this video. We'll have more from Pete Agnew coming up next week. Make sure you comment on our videos. We read all the comments. Subscribe to our channel because, hey, we need subscriptions and we appreciate that. And thank you. We just overpassed 25,000 subscribers a little while ago. And share our videos as well. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.